The HP Project and the HP Channel are supported by AudioQuest. Experience the difference. In part 2, we remain busy with the power cord. It appears that reversing the power plug can lead to a better sound. If all else is done properly too, of course. Almost all stereo equipment runs on power from the grid. That can be 110 to 240 volts AC or alternating current, depending on where you live. The electronics inside your stereo equipment runs on DC or direct current. The power supply inside your stereo equipment not only reduces the voltage, but it also converts it from AC to DC. If all went well, there will be the working DC voltage needed by the electronics and an absolute zero that is also connected to the housing. It is this zero voltage that is also connected to other equipment over the interconnects. You must have noticed the if all went well. And rightly so, for often the zero voltage is not the zero voltage you want all your stereo equipment to use as a reference. I will not go into de details why this is or might be. The fact is that there almost always is a voltage difference between the grounds of individual devices in your stereo. You can easily check this by disconnecting all audio cables, including speaker cables, from your equipment while leaving the power cords connected. Simply measure the voltage between the chassis of two devices by using a voltmeter. You could use the ground terminal near the phono input, any other bare metal on the chassis or the outer ring of the phono in or outputs. Now change the polarity of the power cable by turning the plug 180 degrees. In most European countries this is easy since a symmetrical plug is used. I know France to use a ground pin that is placed asymmetrical and perhaps other Mediterranean countries use those too. The UK uses the flat euro connector for low wattage devices and that can be reversed easily. This isn't the case for the 15 amps plug with ground pin. About the same goes in the US where the small two pin connector is reversible as where the version with the ground pin isn't. And I have seen asymmetrical plugs in other countries like South Africa. In some countries there are strict rules on what pin should carry the phase and what the return, but this is not always the case. But before you do, a warning is in place. Power cables work with high voltages that can be lethal. Therefore, if you are not sure about working on power cables, please don't. Find a qualified person to do it for you. Since this video is watched all over the world, there might be legal restrictions in your country. Please check this before attempting the pro proposed actions. I cannot and will not accept any responsibility for anything that is caused by these proposed actions. It is your responsibility to check if things are allowed in your country. Okay. This is the way to reduce ground potential between your stereo components. If you live in a part of the world where you can easily reverse the power connector, you're set. If not, you might want to MacIver a cable with a male power plug on one side and a female plug on the other side that reverses the polarity. Disconnect all audio cables from your components, interconnects and loudspeaker cables. Again, be absolutely sure what you do or you might not only ruin your stereo components, but even get electrocuted yourself. Now take the voltage meter, set it to DC and measure the voltage between the chassis of a device and the ground pin or lip on the wall socket. And remember or write down the reading. Now reverse the power plug and or insert the reversing cable and measure again. Use the orientation of the power plug that gave the lowest reading. If you have to use the reversing cable, you might want to disconnect the power cable, unscrew the power plug and reverse phase and null or if it's vulcanized, cut it off and screw on a new plug using the desired polarity. Now do this for each component in your stereo. 
since it's unlikely you'll be able to fully eliminate any earth potential between the components of your stereo, the less components there are in your stereo, the greater the chance the sound will be unharmed. If you connect the TV to your stereo, try to do that by optical cable, since that doesn't make a galvanic con connection. This was part 2 of the Audio Hygiene sequel. Part 3 is already in the making, so subscribe to this channel or follow me on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. You can also post questions but please don't ask me for buying advice. View my questions video to find out why. You'll find more information below this video. If you like this video, please consider supp supporting this channel through Patreon and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.